Hey guys, Andrea here from Nuts and Bolts Media. Today I'm going to show you how to install the Genesis framework and a child theme on your WordPress site. As always, if you need other tips for web design, WordPress training, or any kind of tech support for your site, you can visit us at nutsandboltsmedia.com. The first step that you want to take in installing the Genesis framework is downloading your files. Once you've purchased, you'll want to log into your member download area which you can get to by going to my.studiopress.com slash downloads. You'll see a screen like this and depending on what you've purchased, you'll see a list of all your themes. In this case, we want to get the framework first, so we'll scroll down until we find Genesis Framework. And we'll click the blue download button to download that zip file. And then for this tutorial, I'm going to install the sample child theme, which comes free with the framework. So if you only purchase the framework, you'll at least have this theme to install. So we'll download it as well. Now we'll head over to the test site that I've set up. As you can see, it's very plain, 2012. Nothing happening on this site just yet. So it's a good canvas to start with. In your WordPress dashboard, you'll go to Appearance Themes. You always want to install the Genesis framework before your child theme. The child theme is going to look for the framework to make sure it's installed. And as you can see right now on our test site, I have several broken themes listed. Uh, those are all Genesis child themes. And since I removed the framework to do this tutorial, it's telling me, hey, the parent theme's not here. What's going on? So always get in the habit of installing the framework zip file first. To do that, you'll need to go to the Install Themes tab at the top of the dashboard and you'll want to click the Upload link. Choose your file. I've got it right here on my desktop. I want to choose the one that, as of the time of this video, is Genesis.2.0.1.zip. So now that it's in the box, I'll click Install Now. Now you don't have to activate the Genesis framework because your child theme is going to be the active theme. You can if you want to, it doesn't make a difference, but there's really nothing gained by doing that. So we'll return to the themes page. You'll see my other child themes now show up. They're not broken anymore because the framework's there. But in this case, since we're using the sample theme, we're gonna go back to install themes, back to upload. We're going to choose the Genesis sample zip and install now. And then in this situation we're going to activate because that's the theme that we want to be active. Now we'll go back to the test site and we'll see Genesis Framework up at the top. And the first thing you may notice is that all of the sidebar widgets are gone. And that happens a lot when you activate Genesis for the first time. So back in the dashboard we'll go to Appearance Widgets and we'll see in the inactive widgets area, all the widgets that were in my sidebar before are still there. They just got moved. So we'll want to open the primary sidebar. And we'll start with search. Recent posts, recent comments. I'll just add a few in here. And we can go back to the test site and refresh. And our widgets are back. So that's basically all that you need to do to get your child theme and the Genesis framework installed. Now that we've done that and we've fixed our widgets, um, a couple things that you may want to do is go into Genesis and theme settings. If you use FeedBurner or FeedBlitz or anything like that for your RSS feed, you can enter that URL here and check the box to redirect it. That means any RSS or subscription links on the site will automatically go to the right place. You can choose a default layout for your theme. Most of the time, if you have a blog, it's going to be content sidebar, but you could also choose any of the other layout options. If you want to use an image or just text for your logo, you can choose that here. Uh, the navigation options aren't there right now because this test site does not have a menu, but once you've created a menu in appearance menus, uh, you can choose extras such as today's date or a search bar, things like that to put on your navigation bar. 
You can enable breadcrumbs. Uh, you can choose content archives, which is your blog page, category pages, things like that. You can choose whether to display the whole post, part of the post, whether to include the featured image. Uh, one of my favorite things to change is the post navigation technique shown here. Um, you have the option for previous or next or numeric, and I usually prefer numeric, but that's completely up to you. You can exclude categories from the blog page. So, for example, if you have a category that you don't want to show in the overall list of your posts, you can hide it there. You can also choose how many posts to show. And then toward the bottom, we have header and footer scripts. Uh, you can add, for example, your Google Analytics code to the header scripts area, and that will automatically place it throughout your site. If you have any other kind of ads or things like that that you want site-wide, that's a good place to put them. One other thing that you may want to do if you're not using an SEO plugin on your site is to use the Genesis SEO settings. Now, if you have a plugin that's active, you won't see this under your Genesis options in the dashboard. If you are not using a plugin, then you'll see basic options. Um, one of the things that I recommend that everyone do is to put in a home meta description for your site and keywords. Even though it will tell you here, keywords are generally ignored by search engines. Never hurts to put them in. This will give you an opportunity to tell search engines what your site is about from the home page. Now, on your blog post, you'll have SEO settings for the individual blog post where you can fill in keywords or descriptions. But this is just overall for your site, for the home page, what people are going to see if they Google the name of your site. You can also set an author for your home page. In most cases, this would be you. Um, if it's a multi-author site, then you may want to choose someone who is going to be the main author for Google authorship. And if you're not familiar with Google Authorship, that's the ability to put your picture in search results, and you've probably seen that. Uh, there are many, many other settings here. I wouldn't recommend that you worry too much about them if you're not comfortable with SEO. The main thing is to get that homepage description and keywords put in and save your settings. So that's basically it. You've now got it installed. You know a few things to get started. If you have any questions, feel free to submit them through the site and I'll write a post to answer them. Thanks so much.